So 1 Peter 2, 9. But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people, that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Yeah. So we have been in our series, Faith Expansion. Who has been blessed so far? Man, this series has been amazing. So today is part three, and the title of today's message is Royal Faith. So, Father, we just thank you for this time, Lord God. I thank you, God, that you speak through me, Lord God. I thank you that you speak to me, Lord God. And we just thank you for just blessing every person in here, every person watching, in Jesus' name, amen. All right, you guys can grab your seats. Get comfy, get comfy. <laughs> so, you know, 2022, we declared, oh, thank you so much. <laughs> Worship team, awesome, Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Um, so we declared this year to be the year of expansion, right? And if you guys, you know, concur, make some noise, but we have been seeing the expansion and we've been feeling the expansion, you know? Um, our words are very powerful, but we'll get into that later. Um, but a lot of times expansion cannot feel so comfortable. And, you know, we've heard this example, when a woman is pregnant, what, she has to expand and stretch and be uncomfortable first, and then she gives birth to a bundle of joy, right? So right now, I just feel like if you are here and you feel uncomfortable or you feel stretched, it's okay because God is making room for the expansion. So... I love, that's why I love last week's message, Resting Faith. If you have not watched that, it is on our YouTube channel. Resting Faith, meaning no matter what you're facing, no matter what storms you're going through, no matter what's coming in front of you, you know that God has got your back and he's working on your behalf. And that is Resting Faith, which is like the highest form of faith. But one thing that we spoke about in week one, that pastor spoke about that I haven't seemed to like shake, it really stuck with me, the statement that said, your faith will only go where your identity will take you. Your faith will only go where your identity will take you. And identity is something that I'm super passionate about because I remember being in a place where I didn't know who I was. I didn't know my identity in the Lord. So I settled for anything, or shall I say anyone. And <laughs> let's be real. We don't know. That's, you know, you just settle for whatever and you deal with whatever, you know, but as I came to know my identity in the Lord, it was like, whoa, watch out, you know? But it's not a one-time thing. It's not like, you know, oh, God says I'm this, and cool, I'm running with it, because the Word specifically says, you know, I always say everything in the Word is intentional, because God was 100% God and 100% man, so he knows every single thing that we go through, and he relates. So when he says in Romans 12, 2, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind daily. It's not a one-time thing. You know, every day we have to grow in our identity. Every day we're becoming closer and closer to look more like Jesus. Are we there yet? Okay. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, none of us are perfect. We're not there yet. So every day it's a growth. Every day we evolve. Every day, you know, we get closer and closer to that. So it's a daily thing. Um, so I just felt like today, I'm like, okay, because, you know, when I preach sometimes, it's very, like, Bible study teaching, like, bullet points, you know, and I'm like, okay, God, like, what do you want to do today? And I want to talk about identity today, but I literally feel like my only assignment, because we always say, always know why you're doing what you're doing. So today, my win is literally to just speak identity and power over you. And that's just, like, my pure assignment for this next 30 minutes, and that's it, and we're just going to run with it. So in Genesis 1.27, God said, I made man in my image and likeness, okay? We know that the Old Testament was originally written in the Hebrew, and the Hebrew word for image and likeness means to resemble. So I'm like, okay, you've made me to resemble you, right? So you're telling me that I'm created with authority. I'm created with love. I'm created with power. I'm created, I could speak things into existence. I could pray and I could see my prayers come to pass. I can pray and intercede over cities and nations, and I could see my prayers manifest. Oh, okay, so wait, since I'm made in God's image and likeness, the enemy is afraid of what I could do? Me? Little old me, what I could do, right? So I see, so the enemy is always after your identity, because if he can get to question 
who you are, then you question your faith, you question your life, and you question your entire existence. And that's why we have this young generation committing suicide, because they're questioning their existence because they don't know their identity. But I say it's all a clever little plan, right? If you look at it from the outside. But I also say that once a plan gets exposed, it doesn't work anymore. Yes. So going back to 1 Peter 2.9, you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people, that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. In order to have faith expansion, we have to know who we are. See, it says the um, scripture defines faith as the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. You know, we say that all the time, but when you really think about it, it's like when you have faith for things, are you seeing it physically in front of you? No, you believe. But your identity is so crucial in that because when you know you are a child of God, it's easy for you to believe that all good things he wants to do for you. So it comes with identity. So me having high faith in things, me having faith and believing for things in my life has to do with me knowing who I am as a daughter of God. So it all boils down to identity. And then uh, I want to read Hebrews 11.6. It says, it is impossible to please God without faith. Because the one who draws near to God must believe that he exists and he rewards those who try to find him. The enemy attacks our identity to then attack our faith. And we see right in front of us, it is impossible to please God without our faith because he wants us to believe, right? And it's like, a lot of times we can, we can look at God as like, wow, God, why are you like this? But like, look at it in a normal aspect of like, just human to human relationship and it's like you don't want some you don't if if I'm with my husband and I don't have faith in him or I don't believe it's almost like it is impossible to please him because I don't believe in him I don't have faith in him you know so it's the same thing with God so this isn't a mean statement like it's impossible to please God and we have to please him but no he just wants us to believe because he loves us so much he wants to do so much for us but we must believe if I tell my husband I love you I want to do so much for you you're my world you're everything but he doesn't believe what do I do with that? You know, it's the same thing with God. Same thing with God. I think we make it too complicated. When we know our identity, we make space for our faith to flourish. So I want to talk identity for a second. I'm going to get my little table. Okay, so as people in general, right, we wear many hats, okay? We have pastor hat. You guys are going to see my hat collection. This is my vacation hat. You have mother hat. <laughs> You have father hat, you have auntie or uncle hat, you have entrepreneur hat, you have manager hat. Call out some hats that you wear. <laughs> Call it out. You got what? Husband hat. What? Baldy? <laughs> okay, you got friend. You got the friend hat, you know? You got sister, brother, mother hat, right? So I shared this a few weeks ago, and God spoke this, and he said to me, he said, daughter, I know you're wearing many hats, because it was a time where I was like, Wah! in my life, right? It was like everything was like, he's like, I know you're wearing many hats, but don't ever take off your crown. <laughs> so don't ever take off your crown, right? So... I'm like, okay, God, that's a really cool statement. But I'm a very type A person, and I have these conversations with God, and I believe he loves it because he created me the way he created me, right? Yeah. He created you the way he created you. And I'm like, okay, God, don't take off my crown. I'm a royal priesthood. I'm the apple of your eye. I'm a princess. This all sounds great. Me saying everything right now, even to you, sounds great. But you have to get it in your heart. So I had to ask him. I said, what is this crown, Lord God? Like, I could walk around and be like, I'm a queen, I'm a princess, that's cool. But what does this really mean? I want to get it. I want to get what this crown means, you know? And he said, your crown is your identity. And that's why you must never take it off. So you can wear all these hats, but don't ever take off your crown. And here came the acronym that he gave me. So it is built in our identity. We are creative, relevant outstanding warriors and necessary this is who we are in the lord creative relevant 
outstanding, warriors, and necessary. And I'm gonna break each one of these down. Creative, let's go Psalm 139, 13 through 16. This is in the NIV. So for you created me in my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I, another translation said, you knit me together, you created me, and then you put me in my mother's womb. That's deep, if you think about that. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made, and your works are wonderful. I know that full, I know that full well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in the secret place, when I was woven together in the depths of the earth. Your eyes saw my unformed body, all the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. Wow. Like God took some time with you. <laughs> like he took some time. And then it's like, where do babies come from? The real answer, <laughs> we're not going to get into that conversation with the birds and the bees, but it's like, <laughs> it says he created us before and then put us in our mother's womb. I can't even comprehend that. I'm sorry. Like, I can't even, wow, you know? Um, do we all believe, can we all say that we agree God is a creator? Yeah. Do we believe that, you know, let there be light, there was light, let there be this, there was that, right? He's a creator. So if Genesis 126 says that we were created in his image, does that mean that we are creative? Yes. Yes. Right? Yes. So God has placed ideas inside of you you don't even know about yet, you haven't even discovered yet. And... I do feel like we live in a culture, especially being in LA, where you, when you hear the word creative, you automatically think writer, dancer, musician, actor, and it's like this little box of who's a creator and who's not. I've, I've been told in my past, because I didn't professionally pursue dancing or singing, that I wasn't a creative person. And I'm like, what? Excuse me? You know, that was like, <laughs> pass, pass. But... <laughs> But it's like, think about even like, yes, we have these big ideas or whatever, but think about the way you get creative daily. Yeah. The things you do to get creative in your house and in your job and wherever it may be, you it's in your being. And that's why I'm talking identity. This isn't like a gift. It's who you are. You are a creative person. That's who you are. That's how it created you. So that idea you had years ago, do it. That business plan you have, do it. That, that thing you want to build from the ground up, do it because it is in your nature to do so. Amen? Amen. Amen. The desire you have to live in an atmosphere full of love and peace, create it. Speak it. Yeah. Scripture says, death and life are in the power of the tongue. Those who love it will eat its fruit. We have the power to create. You know, the other day my friend was like telling me I'm broke. I'm like, you're going to stay broke if you keep saying you're broke. <laughs> I, you know, I, I, the type of person I am, and most of you know, I will tell you what you need to hear, what you want, not what you want to hear. And sometimes if I come off like that, it's because I love you. It's out of love. You know, so I told her that. I'm like, you're going to stay broke. You got to speak. You, gotta, you have the power to create. You know, you, you, want, you want things to happen in your life. Speak it forth. Speak the word. Speak what God, speak God's plan. God says that plans to prosper you and not to harm you. If you feel like things are going a certain way in your life, oh no, God's plan is to prosper me and not to harm me, to give me hope in a future. I call forth that hope in future. I call um, forth that prosperity. Speak, create. You have creative power, okay? Whether it's through your hands or through your words. So I want to say, I am creative. creative. All right, let's move on. Relevant. I am relevant. I am relevant. relevant means, I do the dictionary stuff a lot. I like it. But pertinent, significant, relatable, and connected. As a relevant person, you have the power to influence. God has created us to be relevant, to help shape the way people think and act and feel, right? Because you can be the only Jesus that someone can meet. You know, so God has created us to be relevant. Now, I want to speak on this a little bit. When we come to the Lord, we're not this like holier than thou, I am better than everybody else person. It is in our identity to be relevant. 1 Corinthians 9.19 real quick says, For though I am free from all men, I have made myself a servant to all that I might win more. 
So Paul was saying this, right? So it goes on to say, to the Jew, I became to a Jew. To the weak, I became weak. Now, this doesn't mean to the drug addict, I became a drug addict. To the alcoholic, I became an alcoholic. Because we take scripture and we get it so twisted. You know, and it's like, no, that's not what it's saying. But it's saying you stay relatable. And I was reminded of this story. Um, it was someone we know, and she was sharing this story. This was like a really, really long time ago. And she was sharing this story in church about how she was bold, and she was very proud of the story. She's like, yeah, I was bold. And she was at a work function, and someone was like, hey, do you want to drink? Like, it was like all the employees. It was like this thing. And her answer was, I don't drink. I'm a Christian. And I'm like, just don't have a drink. Just say I'm good. Like, what does that do for anybody? <laughs> Like, you know, it's, it's like this whole, like, I'm better than everybody else because I have Jesus. No, I have Jesus because I know I need him. You know, I have Jesus because I know the mess I've been through and he knows the mess I've been through. So that whole, no, I don't need one. I'm a Christian. I'm like, is that going to draw people to God? Is that going to make people hunger for God? Is that going to make people see that God is a loving father? Or are they going to see him as a God that gives you a list of not to do's, you know? So I'm like, if you don't want to drink, just say I'm good and just kick it. Like, have, be normal, you know? Like, I don't know why we have to be so we spooky, spiritual, weird. Like, I'm me, I'm Moral, and I just love the Lord, and I have a relationship with him, and I need him, you know? And that's it. Like, we need the Lord. And as Pastor always says, the more we fall in love with him, the more things that are not supposed to be in our lives fall to the wayside. But it's not like you have to make yourself. Look, I used to smoke weed like a crazy person, okay? Like every day. <laughs> My supply was free. It was just there. So it was like just there, right? Like I, it was my life. And when I came into relationship with God, because growing up I knew religion, I didn't know relationship, I didn't stop, you know. But And let me say this before I continue this story. Everyone has their own conviction. You won't catch us up here saying, don't drink, don't do this, don't do that. This is between you and Jesus. For me, weed was an addiction, and I know that I had to, you know, it was a stronghold in my life because I was using it to fill a void, you know, an emptiness in my heart. So that's me. That's my story. But anyway... Um, so yes, I was going to church or whatever. I would leave church, get in the parking lot, smoke on the way home. It was all good, right? So it, nothing was happening, but I was falling in love with God. And one day I was on the way to the movies with my sister and she was driving and I was smoking before a movie, duh, right? You smoke before a movie. So <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm so kidding. Okay. But anyway, so I, I'm in the car and she's on the phone. She doesn't even know what's going on with me. I mean, if she did, she probably would think I was crazy. But, you know, I'm just smoking and I had it in my hand and we're just driving. After one hit, I don't know, the presence of God just came over me and I started tearing up and I literally was like, I don't want to be high anymore. And I put it away in the middle of smoking. No one told me stop or quit or I said, oh, quit. It literally happened like that as God is my witness. I'm not exaggerating the story one bit. And I didn't touch weed not one time. It was in my face, offered to me. I, but it wasn't like, oh, I can't. I just didn't want to. And that's how it happens with God. You know, that's how it happens. It happens organically. All you have to do is fall in love with him and the things that are in your life, the habits, the relationships, the toxic things, they will fall. All you have to do is just seek him and fall in love with him. So everyone say, I'm relevant. I'm relevant. Next, outstanding. I am outstanding. So... Yes, outstanding, you're wonderful, you're great, but this is a different type of outstanding that I want to talk about. <laughs> See, y'all y'all are y'all getting around, you're like, I'm outstanding, that's right, I'm wonderful. Yes, all that. But we go through a lot of stuff. We've been through a lot of stuff. We all carry pain, we've all been through things, you know, we've all faced different things, we all have our story, we all have our journey. But one thing that differentiates the outstanding from the common is how we handle and react to these things. You guys have heard of the quote that says 10% of life is what happens to you, 90% is how you react to it. And I take that quote and connect it with Jesus in my life, and there you go. But <laughs> So the question is, what do I do to be that outstanding person? It's in the word. You outstand. 
Let me, let me explain further. Go to Ephesians 6, 13 through 17. All right, so, therefore put on the full armor of God, so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground. And after you have done everything, to stand. Stand firm then with the belt of truth. What does the belt do? It holds things up. With the breastplate of righteousness, your heart, knowing who you are. It's not a head thing. It's a heart thing. Um, And with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. Wherever God leads me, whatever season I'm in, I'm going to have resting faith and peace. Where am I? In addition to this, take up the shield of faith. The shield of faith. A shield blocks things. Depression comes. I have faith God is, you know, with me. Sickness comes. God heals me. You know, um, anxiety comes. The peace of God surpasses all understanding will guard my heart and mind. That's your shield of faith. You speak the word to anything that comes against you. Shield of faith. Helmet of salvation, you know, um, my mind. I have the mind of Christ. I submit my thoughts to the Lord. I know that this, this thing here is crazy, especially for me. It's like it just goes and goes and goes sometimes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it does. It does. Okay, I admit that. But the helmet of salvation shall guard my heart. <laughs> and the sword of the Spirit our power this is our weapon don't you look i was the i hated to read i would fall asleep all that yes i know some of us are there we've been there but this right here is a weapon when you open this book and you're like this is my weapon this is my sword it's going to be so exciting to read this this is it the word of god because the more you get this in you when you're in situations it's going to come out of you So this is how you stay outstanding. This is how you outstand. You put on the full armor of God daily. Daily. This is a daily thing, people. Daily, okay? So I am outstanding. Warriors. We are warriors. Warriors always rise. 2 Timothy 2, 3, 4. I, I, I do, you know, every time I speak, I know it's like sometimes someone told me it's like a case. Because, like, I have a point, and I have a scripture, and I have a point. It's like, what was that called in, like, in school, like a bibliography, when you have, like, the backup for everything? Okay, whatever. All right. (laughs) Citations, yes. Connotations, whatever. It's been a while. Um, I just said every word in grammar that, yeah. Anyway, so let's read the scripture. (laughs) For every soldier called, where are we? Oh, overcome every form of evil as a victorious soldier slash warrior of Jesus, the anointed one. For every soldier called to active duty must divorce himself, not separate, divorce, must divorce himself from the distractions of this world so that he may fully satisfy the one who enlisted him. Another translation says, do not entangle yourself in civilian affairs. And what does that mean? It means I don't do petty. It means I don't do distractions. It means I don't easily get offended. And it means I quickly forgive because I ain't got time. Do you have time? We don't have time. (laughs) We don't have time. We do not have time. We got too much to do. God is calling us to do too much. And and the scripture says we don't fight against flesh and blood. That's the distraction. You know what I'm saying? And I believe that's connected when he says the civilian affairs because civilian affairs is with civilians you're dealing with people and then the next scripture says we don't deal with flesh and blood so when we are going through things and we're dealing with certain things it is a spiritual thing so how do warriors fight in the spirit we fight with prayer we fight with worship we fight with the word we fight with our sword right and we fight with our identity because we know who we are and that's what i use to fight so if something has come at me oh no i am a daughter of god Oh, no, I am a son of God, right? You fight with your identity. You fight with that knowledge and understanding and revelation that you have in your heart of who you are. So that's warrior. I'm a warrior. warrior. Necessary. 
say, I'm so necessary. <laughs> so, <laughs> in Jeremiah 1, 5, when God said, I formed you in the womb, right? We talked about that. It means every part of us was intentionally made. You know, your personality, your characteristics, your talents, your abilities, your skills, it's all intentional because it is necessary. And again, I, I mentioned this because I do work with teenagers, and it's like when I see the depression rate, and adults too, you know, but I'm just saying this is my world during the week, and I see it so much, but it's like so much like suicide attempts and depression and stuff because they think they're not needed. They think they, they don't matter. They don't think they're necessary. So all I do is just constantly just speak purpose into them because they don't know. They are confused, and the media doesn't make it any easier to lack the confusion anyway, you know? Yeah. So you are necessary. You are needed. You know, when, when, when you're missing, it's noticed because that's how necessary you are. That's how loved you are. First by God and then by the people around you, your community, your family. You are loved, you know? And I don't mean blood. It could be whatever. Family is what you make it, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so you are necessary. But in honor of Mother's Day, see, for Mother's Day, I don't like to be like, oh, I'm just going to talk to the women because everyone's here and everyone wants to get fed. But can I just talk to the women for a second? <laughs> In regards to being necessary, because I got this revelation, I got it stamped on my body. It was like, it's, it's just, this, I want to share this. But when God said, I am creating woman, I'm creating Eve, a lot of times we say, oh, he took him out from the rib, right? Oh, it was just part of, you know, the rib. There's no Hebrew word for rib. There's no word for Hebrew. Uh, there's no word for rib in the Hebrew. It's side, okay? So that's just like a side note. So he took him from Adam's side to create woman. So when he created woman, the Hebrew word he used was Azar. Everyone say Azar. Azar. Azar means an aid, someone who brings support and relief. And then there's an adjoining word that says Konegdo. So it's Azar. Sorry, I should type this out for you guys. Azar Konegdo the Hebrew word that God said when I'm creating woman that was translated into English or whatever so the word connecto means corresponding to or suitable to so azar connecto means corresponding strength essential counterpart and an indispensable companion God created the woman as an azar and this word occurs 21 times in the Bible um in two cases, it refers to the woman. In three times, it refers to the powerful nations that Israel called on for help. And in the 16 remaining cases, it refers to as God as our help. So when God created woman, he created a person of strength. He created a person of rescue. He created a person that comes and supports and brings aid and brings relief. So as women, as mothers, as spiritual mothers, as sisters, as aunties, as friends, you are an Azar. Say, I'm an Azar. You are powerful. God has, you know, this, I, this whole thing with like, I know we've been in churches where, you know, women are so um, downplayed. And it's like, I believe in order, you know. I believe that the man is the head of the household. We're not gonna get into that, it's a whole different message. I believe in that order 100%, you know. So we're not tripping over here, women, okay? <laughs> we're not running the world, like, no, we're not, no. But, but it's good to know who you are as a woman, though. You know, it's not like you're supposed to be weak or whatever. You are a corresponding strength. And this isn't just a husband-wife thing. This is whatever. But you are a corresponding strength. You are an aid. You are a relief. You are a rescue. You know, so it's really good to know, like, as you were created, as God created you, the word he used to create you, Azar. So I just wanted to say that little side thing in honor of Mother's Day. <laughs> And that's why, can, you, can women even say it's in your nature to want to, like, help or fix things? You know, like, isn't it like you'll just see something and you're, like, trying to control yourself to not, like, not get involved and not, like, fix it. And you're like, I could fix that. <laughs> I could learn how to fix that. <laughs> it's in your nature. It's who you are, you know, So because you, you're an Azar. <laughs> Thank God for the women. So all this to say. No matter what you guys are facing, no matter how many hats you're rocking, no matter the, the pressure that you feel of life, you have to remember to never take off your 
crown because it is who you are. You are creative, relevant, outstanding, a warrior, and a necessary child of God. And when you get this in your heart, your faith will have zero limits because you know who you are and you know whose you are. Amen? Amen. 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 Let's pray. <laughs> Father, we just thank you for this time, Lord God. We thank you for who you are. I thank you, God, that we truly, truly get this in our hearts, Lord God, that we don't just hear this and go about life and just get beat up by the enemy, Lord God, but I thank you that we walk out of here with our crowns on and we never take it off, Lord God. So I just thank you, Father God, that every single person in here and every single person watching knows that they are creative, knows that they are relevant, knows that they are outstanding, knows that they are warriors, and knows that they are absolutely necessary, Lord God. I thank you for the purpose and calling that you have for people, Lord God. I thank you that we fulfill, Father God, everything that you've called us to fulfill, Lord God, in Jesus' mighty name. And right now, I do want to take the time, you know, maybe you're kind of like new to this God thing or, you know, you're not really sure about it. Look, I've been there. I, I speak from experience. I wasn't sure. I didn't know. I'm like, what is all this? You know, like God speaks. You hear God. What does that mean? <laughs> um, but I didn't really have to do much. I just had to say, you know what, Lord? I believe. I believe that you died for my sins. I believe that you forgive me. And after I did that and I said that and I meant it in my heart, God moved on my behalf. God showed me himself. He kept showing, it was so supernatural. I can't even get to all the examples, but it was so supernatural. Every time I opened the word or every time, you know, just, just little things would happen to show me that he was always there with me. Even when I thought about the past and times that I could have died or been killed or did just all types of crazy stuff. I'm like, dang, God, that was you. You were there. So if you are here and you've just never like fully just said, you know what, God, I receive you and I want to be in relationship with you, with everyone's eyes closed and heads bowed, this is a private moment between you and God. And for those of you watching, I just want you to like raise your hand, say something in the chat to say, I receive. You know, there's a testimony. I share this almost every time I preach. This man was in prison and he was, you know, just having a real talk with God. He didn't really know God like that. And all he said was, God, you drive and I'll ride. And that's it. It wasn't no fancy prayer, coming to the altar, sprinkling of the water. He literally just was like, that's it. Like I surrender my life to you and God just showed himself to him. And that's all we need. So if that's you, just kind of lift your hands and we're gonna all pray together. Thank you. All right, let's all pray this together, Father. I thank you for who you are. I thank you for being a good father. I thank you for loving me. I thank you for your grace. I thank you for direction. I thank you for clarity. And I thank you that I am a royal priesthood in you. I am your daughter. I am your son. And I thank you that I can walk confidently and boldly in that. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Let's stand up and worship God.